Truly we come, O Lord our God. sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. Please make an examination of conscience. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice with you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry unto you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on the faithful, for he knows how we are formed, remembers that we are dust. As he has his power over the earth, so God's love powers over the faithful. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
let us pray. <coughs> Loving Father, however much we turn from you, you always have compassion. You seek us out and welcome us back with love. Transform us through your Holy Spirit that we may never be lost to you. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and grant us your consolation as we renew our faith in your Son who rose from the dead. Strengthen our hope that all our departed brothers and sisters will share in his resurrection. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from, the ba from a balance or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all because you can do all things and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord, and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Test me, Lord, and try me. Search my heart and mind. Your love is before my eyes. I walk guided by your faithfulness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, and a stronghold in times of trouble. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law, seek justice, seek humility. Hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to who sang Luke. Glory to you, At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see Jesus, who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, 
for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He is gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am sure many who had heard of this preacher and healer from Nazareth, wanted to meet him. If we trace the story of Jesus from the beginning, there were many people, including Zacchaeus, who wanted, if possible, just to catch even a glimpse of Jesus. I am sure that there were many who did see him and saw him as John the Baptist proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Many believed in Jesus when they heard him speak and witnessed his various healings. He laid his hands and cured the blind, the deaf, the crippled, the lepers, and even raised the dead. So when Zacchaeus ventured out to see Jesus, he went with great enthusiasm. But he also knew of his limitations. He was short in stature and probably would not be able to see Jesus above the crowds. So Zacchaeus, being short, did the next best thing. He chose to climb a sycamore tree. Maybe when he heard about Jesus, he reflected on his life and probably his job as a tax collector. Maybe he hoped that by seeing Jesus, he would come to believe what many other people came to believe like Andrew said to his brother Peter, Come, we have found the Messiah. Now sycamore trees can grow up to 60 feet tall, but Zacchaeus didn't need all that height. He needed just enough to see Jesus above the crowd. What if you were Zacchaeus? What if it was said to you by the Lord, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. I believe that such an encounter would have felt like Zacharias, or I'm sorry, Zacchaeus felt overwhelmed. I believe that many 
of you here in church today have already felt the Lord in your life. And just as Zacchaeus did, it gives a higher understanding of oneself and the undeniable truth that the Lord is among us. The outcome of this encounter led Zacchaeus to a personal transforming redemption. Not only did he declare that he would give half of his possessions to the poor, but he added, if I extorted anything from anyone, I shall pay it four times over. In this simple story, not only did Zacchaeus see Jesus, he saw him for who he was. He found in the end what he was in search for. And so today, may those who are called by the Lord to come down have a reawakening in him who offers each of us sanctification and eternal life. Speaking of eternal life, I would like to speak briefly on this the octave of all souls. Today we observe the octave of all souls. At the conclusion of our service, we will remember and offer prayers for our faithful departed. What of the history of all souls? What is the biblical view of all souls today? It is recorded that All Souls is a medieval era church feast meant to commemorate the dead. In Catholic and other liturgical Protestant churches, certain saints are given certain feast days, whereas All Saints Day, November 1st, is for all the saints of God, All Souls Day, November 2nd is for every believer. The exact origin of All Souls Day is unknown, but it isn't any more than 1,200 years old. The Orthodox Church traces the first All Souls Day to 893 AD, when Emperor Leo VI was denied his request to dedicate a church to the memory of his late wife and then dedicated it to All Souls instead. Originally, All Souls Day was held around Easter time. The Orthodox Church today celebrates it several times throughout the year, including four times around Lent. Roman Catholics and liturgical Protestants celebrate All Souls on November the 2nd, unless it falls on a Sunday, in which case it is moved to November 3rd. The Orthodox Church celebrates <coughs> All Souls merely as a remembrance. The Roman Catholic Church and some Protestants use this day to pray and to offer indulgences to help loved ones escape purgatory. And this practice continues to this day in the Roman Catholic Church and even appears on modern prayer cards. The message reads, a partial indulgence is granted to the faithful who raise their mind with humble confidence to God. A change from the monetary indulgences of the past the Polish National Catholic Church does not prescribe to the belief of indulgences or upon the Roman Catholic belief of the concept of purgatory. It is well known that the Roman Catholic Church used indulgences to collect from the common man finances to back the Crusades as well as to fill the coffers of the church. These indulgences were built upon the fears of the suffering and the torment of relatives, in which by paying indulgences, they would have their punishment lessened. The Polish National Catholic Church, in 1913, 
had our first prime bishop, Francis Hodder, present the Confession of Faith. And in 1914, it was adopted at the Third General Synod held in Chicago. That's 125 years ago. It also must be said that this Confession of Faith has not been modified since then. So what does Bishop Holder speak about life after passing from the earth, earthly plane? In the Confession of Faith, Bishop Holder writes, I believe in the ultimate justice of God, in a future life beyond the grave, which will be a continuation of this temporal life, and which, as to its condition, in degree of perfection and happiness is dependent upon our present life, but above all on the state of our soul in the final hour before death. In this simple but most profound statement, Bishop Francis showed that there was no need for indulgences and places the determination of the individual soul not upon the church and indulgences, but rather upon God alone. It is also viewed that the teachings of purgatory, as described by the Roman Catholic Church, is considered unbiblical among many Christian denominations. Although Martin Luther discouraged praying for the dead, many Protestant countries still use this practice as we do in the Polish National Catholic Church, but without indulgences. All Souls Day is also considered a day in which loved ones clean and decorate the grave sites of their faithful departed. In the United States and Canada, All Souls Day has for the most part been overshadowed by Halloween, which was originally known as All Hallows Eve. And so there is a difference in the theological understanding of All Souls Day. Though it is accepted by many Christian denominations to remember the faithful departed, and though it should be a time to clean and decorate the grave sites of departed loved ones, in the end, my brothers and sisters, it is God, our Creator alone, who gave unto his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the power to judge the living and the dead. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless us in the gifts which we have offered, and show us the way that leads to eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, accept these gifts and receive our departed brothers and sisters into the glory of your Son. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death. 
and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore we join with the voices of the seraphim, cherubim, archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory this day, repeating humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of God and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace and defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and count among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with this love Draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, Again, giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son and Lord and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we are servants and faithful people offered to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, a holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul is also Andrew, and all the saints grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord,
your salvation. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Ever living God, we give you thanks and praise that we have received your Son in the Holy Eucharist. Make us worthy of your call that we may always be ready to respond to the needs of others through Christ Jesus our Lord. May the death and resurrection of Christ, which we proclaim in this Eucharist, bring the faithful departed to the peace of your eternal kingdom. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Sacrifices offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light. For he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. So my gown, I feel like sometimes like ladies lifting up their gowns, so at least I don't trip on the altar steps. But if that's the, if that's the worst of all that the Lord's going to throw me, then, then I'm fortunate. I welcome you to church today. I bring to mind that following this morning's Mass, uh, there will be a monthly meeting of the Ladies' Adoration Society of the Blessed Sacrament. I'm going to ask that a couple of the gentlemen after Mass please set up the square of the tables um, so that uh, we can meet. We already set up a U over in the corner. So okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, though. Um, I bring to mind this afternoon there will be an all soul service that will take place at our parish cemetery with prayers and the blessings of grave sites of the faithful departed. If you can, please come out at two o'clock. 
I do bring to mind some of the announcements for today. Um, I have been asked by Marianne Uckney to, to place in the bulletin a sincere and an appreciated thank you for all the men and the women of our parish who worked so hard making our Fall Bazaar a great success. Uh, please be advised that this week I will be leaving Wednesday uh, a little after uh, 12 o'clock noon uh, to travel to the Eastern Diocesan Clergy Retreat uh, that will be held uh, in Madison, Connecticut. I am scheduled to come back later on Thursday. I did put in today's bulletin the next schedule for uh, pierogi uh, that will be made for three Saturdays, November 9th, 16th, and 23rd at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we've been so blessed with the people that have come out in making and preparing the pierogi, and so I bring that to mind. I am happy to announce that our parish has welcomed back Mrs. Barbara Stahelski as our organist. You know, Barbara has been a lifetime member of the Polish National Catholic Church, and she has given many hours to our parish. I did put down the old schedule, so I think that might be amended a little bit. But um, is there, Karen, uh, is there a, a gathering on Tuesday, November 5th? Yes. Okay, thank you. And I guess we'll go from week to week and we'll just confirm the schedule. Um, I do bring to mind that um, next Sunday, the 32nd Sunday in the Ordinary, Holy Mass and Fellowship, and I'm also scheduled to have uh, the movie Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. It is approximately an hour and a half, and it is a wonderful film. Uh, it was actually made back in the 70s, and it is on the life of St. Francis of Assisi. Everyone who has seen this film has been moved by the content of this movie. And so please, share it with your family, with your, with your friends, and take a time to come and relax and learn about the life of a truly remarkable individual. Are there any other announcements that I failed to mention? Buddy? Okay. Uh, as of right now, and I don't know if there's any other money that's coming in, the bubbles are, I have deposited $7,934.80. Wow. Okay, so that's, not, you know, I don't know what to do because I don't have any classes in the hand. But okay, still. So that's what we have before it's rested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. All of you. Yes, buddy, please. More. Uh, we do have some monkeys. No, no. Monkeys left over. Day 661, uh, we have approximately maybe 10, 20, 10 or 12 packages left. Okay, we're going to do a buy one, get one free. Pay for the higher price, get one equal or lower value. <laughs> they were frozen last week, so they are still excellent. You know, I don't have the exact count, and Peg, you probably would have it. A um, little less than 300 dozen, uh, 661 Gwumki, maybe, I don't know, 12, maybe up to 20 that are left, 50 apple pies, 14 French meat pies, 50 mini banana breads, and the tables were filled with the pastries all that went, along with sandwiches and soup and beans and kapusta. And I got a lot of comments, people that were saying, you know, Father, I look forward every single year to coming to the Fall Bazaar. And I actually had a couple of people that says, you know, there are a lot of places where I will not buy food because I don't feel comfortable. But I know that when I come to your Fall Bazaar, I feel comfortable with everything that I purchased. So a lot of accolades, a lot of grateful and thankful people. And I kind of kidded around and I said, 
It kind of reminded me of the Old Testament, uh, one of the plagues of, uh, of Moses that he set forth on the Pharaoh, the coming of the locusts. And so, so we are so appreciative, but it is all of you who worked so hard and gave up your time. And every single thing that is thrown up against us and any kind of an obstacle, it is the faith and the love and the devotion of this parish that sustains us. And so I am so grateful that I am able to be a part and to see the enthusiasm that goes into making all these things for what? For us? No, for this church. And so again, God bless you. Um, and now, if there's no other announcements, beg, please. I want to make one last plug for calendars. We have three calendars left, so if you're interested, see me downstairs. Thank you. And they're wonderful cal calendars, $7. Yeah. And you really can't go wrong. You know, if you were to go out to, to the mall or even order them on the uh, online, you're paying $14, $17 for a calendar. And they're really wonderful cal calendars because every single month, they give a message of inspiration. Thank you, Peg. And now, let us offer prayers for our faithful departed. At the very end, because I know that there may have been some that have not filled out the envelopes, at the end, we are going to ask that anyone who wants to um, include the names of the faithful departed <coughs> can do so at the completion of the prescribed names that we have in our special um, All Souls uh, booklet. Thank you, God bless you, and have a good day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. On this, the octave of all souls day, let us pray for the repose of the souls of our first Prime Bishop and organizer of the Polish National Catholic Church, Franciszek Hodor, for Prime Bishop Leon Dorohowski, for Prime Bishop Fadia Szelinski, for Prime Bishop Francis Rowinski, for Bishop Francis Bonchak, for Bishop Valentine Governor Husky, for Bishop John Gudetinis, for Bishop John Yashinsky, for Bishop John Yashashik, for Bishop Joseph Hadeski, for Bishop Joseph Lesniak, for Bishop Joseph Soltishak, for Bishop Joseph Kardach, for Bishop Eugene Magia, for Bishop Joseph Nieminski, for Bishop Anthony Grish, for Bishop Walter Swobakevich, for Bishop Thomas Ganat, for Bishop Joseph Zawistowski, for Bishop Thaddeus Petlowski, for Bishop Joseph Pachik, for Bishop Jan Davikdiok, for Bishop Kazmier Grotnik, for Bishop Daniel Siganowski, for Bishop Anthony Kozbowski, for Bishop Stephen Kaminski, for Bishop Stanley Golinski, for Father Dr. Teofil Tchaikovsky, for Very Reverends Louis Ozrek, Stanley Strzok, Stanley Schumann, John Krauss, and for all the departed bishops, senior priests, and priests of the Polish National Catholic Church. Let us pray for all the organizers of all the parishes of the Polish National Catholic Church. Let us now remember and pray for all our faithful departed. For Stanley Buckney Jr., for Mary Lanichki, for Stephen Ralechki, for Bronik Ralechki Sr., for Robert Durkey, for Donnie Herzig, for Doug Robinson, for Mike and Liz Leah Princey, for Dana and Janet Whitman. For Leon and Jenny Okula, 
for John and Anna Sadowski, for Helen Kislowski, for Helen, for Henry Kislowski, for Mary Koschik, for Joe Koschik Sr., for Jesse and Carl Dickinson, for Carl Dickinson Jr., and for all the deceased members of the Kislowski, Koschik, and Kosikowski families. Let us pray for the repose of the souls of John and Florence Mitliki, Michael and Julia Mitliki, all the deceased members of the Mitliki and Potts families, for Annette Chimino, for Anne Floyd, for Victoria and George Andres, for Audrey Blakesley, for all deceased members of the Majewski family, and for all deceased members of the Dostal family, for Francis and Michael Wirth, for Anna and Joe Villegas, and for all departed members of the Wirth and Lelichki families. For Stella Adamski, for Andrew Adamski, for Eugene Stankowski, for David Rapoli, for William and Jenny Vilga, for Foster and Helen Rapoli, for Bernard and Chesfra Godin, for Reverend Francis and Stella Kaminsky, and all deceased members of the Boganovich and Vilga families. For William Girardi Sr. and Rose Girardi, for John Wadsworth and Jean Wadsworth, for Sophie and Bernard Colley, for Bernard Earl Colley, for Richard Solon White, for Marianne and Anthony Oskowski, for Nellie and Ed and Thelma Foster, and for all the departed members of the Ostrowski, Bobetsky, Foster, and Colley families. For Robert Jakonowski and all deceased members of the Jakonowski families. For Fred Boren, for Patricia <coughs> Zack, for Henry Helen Caddy, and all departed members of the Boren family. For Dorothy Stahelski, and all departed members of the Whitman and Stahelski families. For William O'Connor, for Anne O'Connor, for Earl Shaw, for Regina Shaw, for Rose, Rosamond Sloan, and for all deceased members of the Shaw and O'Connor's families. For Robert Adamski, for Charlie Bohanovich, for Stacia Golubka, for Anthony J. Ferrick Jr., for Elizabeth Knight, for Morgan Davis, for Eleanor Ferrick, for Frank Strosky, for Thomas, Wanda, and Janet Korber, for Mary Ann Korber, for Chester and Mary Rutkowski, for Stanley, Jenny, and Edrew Shalinsky, for Stanley Sr., Stacia, and Stanley <coughs> Jr. Papuga, for all departed members of the Korber and Rukowski family. For Stanley Lukowski, for John and Stephanie Lukowski, and all the deceased members of the Lukowski and Shumsky families. For Al, Flo, Dee Dee, and Jackie Bovin, for John and Helen Flynn, for Shadow Alice and Shirley Boisel, for Harry and Phyllis O'Connor. Other intentions? Then let us pray for all the faithful departed veterans of our parish. <coughs> let us also pray for all the faithful departed of Holy Name of Jesus Parish.
In humbleness of prayer, let us pray unto the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.